Windows 10 operating system from Microsoft is designed to help you manage files and applications to help organize information quickly so you can find what you're looking for. In this tutorial, I would like to look at the Windows 10 tips, tricks and productivity hacks to make you more effective and productive. To find what you're looking for quickly in Windows 10, it is extremely important to configure Windows Search and indexing options correctly. To configure Windows Search and Indexing options, you need to navigate to Settings and type Windows Search Settings. By default, Windows 10 uses classic search and indexing options. To change that, you can click Customize Search Locations here and it opens up default search locations where Windows typically looks for the data. To change the settings, you need to click Modify button. By default, Windows only searches on Drive C in the Users folder and only searches in the specific locations. So if your files are located outside of these folders, then they will not be indexed and Windows will not be able to find them. For example, all of my files are located on external drive, which is 512 gigabytes inside. To enable indexing on this drive, I can just check this box and then Windows will index all the files on this external drive. You can also manually modify all the folders that you would like to include in your search. Sometimes when you copied or created a lot of files on your computer, you might consider rebuilding the index. To do that, you click on Customize Search Locations here and here you go to Advanced Options. In addition to rebuilding the index by using Rebuild button, you can also choose if you would like to index encrypted files. If you navigate to File Types area, you can granularly define if you want to index specific file extensions and how would you like them to be indexed by Properties only, which would include file name, file description, size, and other attributes, or you will include file properties and also file content allowing Windows to find information based on the file content as well. If you frequently open one particular section of Windows settings, you might consider pinning this section to the Start menu. This way, you can access it with just one click right from the Start menu. To pin particular section of settings into Start menu, you need to navigate to Settings, and here choose the section that you would like to pin. For example, if I access Update and Security very frequently, I can select the section, right mouse click, and click Pin to Start. Windows prompts me, do you want to pin this tile to Start, and you say Yes here. And now, if you go to Start menu, you see Update and Security is available right here. You can click it and get into Windows Update and Security section with just one click. Alternative way to take screenshots in Windows 10 is by using Snipping Tool. You launch Snipping Tool by type Snipping. You type Snipping Tool by using a Start button in Windows 10. You launch it. Here you can create new Snipe by clicking the New button. And Snipping Tool allows you to select specific area in Windows 10 which you would like to screenshot. The difference between Snipping Tool and the Print Screen button is that Print Screen always takes a full screen and Snipping Tool allows you to make a selection. Once you take screenshot, you can copy it by clicking Edit Copy or using a keyboard shortcut and you can paste it into a different application. I, I will be using WordPad uh, to paste it. So to launch WordPad, you type WordPad in Windows 10 Start menu. It launches WordPad and then here you just use Paste button and it pastes that snipe that we just took using Snipping Tool. One of the new ways to take screenshots in Windows 10, which was recently introduced, is a tool called Snip and Sketch. You can launch it by using keyboard or just launch it in Windows Start menu. To launch it in Windows Start menu, you type the name of it, Snip and Sketch, and it shows up as one of the applications. And here you can just use a, a new snip. You select the area, paste it into the editing uh, application where you can highlight it. From here you can copy it by using the copy button and then you paste it into another application. For example, WordPad. Once copied into clipboard, it could be pasted into any application that has access to clipboard, which is pretty much any Windows application. Sometimes you may need to take a screenshot and have it saved into the file system. 
Windows provides a shortcut to accomplish this in one step, using Windows key and print screen button. To take screenshot and save it directly into the file system, you click Windows button and uh, holding Windows button push print screen. You see the screen flashes for a second and then you navigate to the folder um, and you go to pictures and here Windows created screenshot subfolder and here you see your screenshot. One of the coolest productivity features of Windows 10 is its ability to focus on one application at a time and clean up screen quickly so you can stay focused. One of the coolest capabilities to focus on one application and clean up the screen is to just shake the application, which allows you to clear the screen and focus on only a single application. To bring them all back, you can shake again and it restores the screen as it used to be. Another cool feature Windows provides is the a button in the lower right corner. It's barely visible, but I'm moving my cursor here to show where this button is. If you click on this, it minimizes all the applications and shows the desktop. You can click on it again and it restores the desktop. A lot of times you may need to back up important documents to access them from multiple Windows computers or from the cloud storage by using the browser. Using latest version of Windows 10, you can configure OneDrive backup settings to define which folders should be synchronized with the cloud storage. To define which folders will be synchronized with OneDrive, you need to navigate to the OneDrive icon, go to More, go to Settings. And here in Settings, first of all, you can see that my account only uses 389 kilobytes out of 5 gigabytes available. But to choose folders um, that's available for the backup, you click Choose Folder button and it shows all the folders available for the backup and you can select which ones would you like to put in and synchronize. Once we finalize configuration, we can trigger the backup. To do that, you click OK on the settings screen, you navigate to Documents, and you click Manage OneDrive Backup. You click View Sync in Progress. To manage backup, I'm going to create a folder structure and couple sample files to demonstrate how backup works. I created sample folder in the documents and uh, three sample text files. Now to trigger the backup, what we need to do is we need to right mouse click on the documents and click manage online backup and click start backup. And once backup is complete, you can navigate to the documents folder and you will see that it replicated the folder structure on OneDrive and also the green status indicates that the sample folder for documents and three sample files have been backed up and are available in the cloud. All of us would like to store sensitive documents in a secure place. Microsoft recently introduced Personal Vault concept on OneDrive. Personal Vault allows you for some extra protection and secure storage of your most sensitive and important documents. Access to Personal Vault requires multi-factor authentication and expires after 20 minutes. Personal Vault is configured through OneDrive settings. You click on OneDrive, you click More, and then you click Unlock Personal Vault, and it requires multi-factor authentication. To trigger multi-factor authentication, you select the email associated with the account and enter the code that was sent to the email. Once unlocked, uh, you can access Personal Vault just by clicking the folder, just like a regular folder. Uh, I put three sample files in that folder, and uh, you can access them from your PC or from um, online storage uh, in the cloud using the browser. Uh, the vault will automatically lock in uh, 20 minutes, and you would have to use multi-factor authentication to access it again. But the fact that it requires multi-factor authentication uh, provides additional security and allows you to put sensitive documents into that particular folder. Most of the times, Windows updates and other maintenance tasks can start unexpected when you might be in the middle of the work and need full access to computer resources. Latest version of Windows 10 created some artificial intelligence algorithm to help determine your working hours. Enabling this algorithm would allow Windows to push updates and other maintenance tasks to trigger off hours when you're not using your computer. To allow Windows configure active hours, you click Start button, navigate to Settings. In Settings, you search for Active Hours.
In previous versions of Windows, you can manually configure active hours. For example, mine are configured here by default from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. But now you can allow Windows automatically adjust active hours based on the activity. You turn on the settings, and now, going forward, Windows will start monitoring when do you use the device, and Windows will do maintenance activities outside of the active hours. If you'd like the content, please make sure to click the like button, share with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. With availability of high-resolution displays, sometimes it's hard to see all the details, as fonts or Windows details might be too small to see. Using latest Windows 10 update, you can either make text larger or make everything bigger on your high-resolution monitor. To make text on Windows components bigger, you click Start button, navigate to Settings, navigate to Ease of Access, and here you have a slider that allows you to change the size of the text, and you can pick the text that you'd like. If you would like to make everything bigger, not just the text, you have an option of the drop-down menu, and here you can pick uh, different percentages. 100% uh, is the normal size, and you can go up the list and pick the one that you would like to use. And you see, as I picked 125%, it made it bigger, um, and I can pick 150%, it will make it even larger but I prefer 100% because my resolution is just 1080p, but your resolution might be different, and that would allow you to pick the size of the uh, elements in Windows according to your screen resolution. Historically, Windows only allowed you to see only latest items from the clipboard. Now, you can enable clipboard history, and this would allow you to see all the items that have been put into clipboard, and you can paste selectively only items that you need from the clipboard into the target application. To enable clipboard history, you navigate to Settings, go to Clipboard Settings, and here you enable the setting called Clipboard History. And as you can see, you would need to press Windows plus V to view the clipboard history. I'm going to launch the browser and take a couple clipboard snapshots. So I'm going to navigate to Microsoft.com. I'm going to use keyboard shortcut Windows Shift S to enable snip and sketch, and this will take image into the clipboard. And I'm going to I'm going to scroll down here and select some text, and use Control C shortcut. You can also use right mouse click and use copy on the clipboard. And uh, I will. Um, click and take a combination of um, image and text using Windows Shift S keyboard shortcut on the keyboard. So by now I should have three uh, items in my clipboard. Now I'm going to use Windows V shortcut and you see that three items are available in Windows clipboard. To paste them I'm going to launch WordPad and in WordPad um, I will just execute the same command, Windows V, and you see now I can select which item I would like to paste. So let's say I would like to paste this one. This is the oldest, and Windows allows me to quickly paste it. Or if I use Windows V again, I can pick the, just the text item and it pastes it as text. You can see that using this latest feature, I can uh, put more than one item into clipboard and paste them based on my need into the target application. A lot of times, you may need to reduce brightness on your display very quickly. It might be necessary if you're trying to make screen less visible to others, and sometimes you just want to preserve battery power for your laptop or tablet. Typically, to change brightness, you navigate to Settings, type uh, Change Brightness Level, and here you can adjust level of brightness for your screen. Now you can do it with just one mouse click. You navigate to Notifications, and here you can adjust brightness the same way. Windows Sandbox is a temporary desktop environment where you can run untrusted software without fear of lasting impact to your host PC. Any software installed on Windows Sandbox stays only on the Sandbox and cannot affect your host. Once Sandbox is closed, Windows deletes all temporary files that have been created or loaded onto the Sandbox. To install Windows Sandbox, you need to navigate to Settings, Apps, Programs and Features, 
and here click Turn Windows Features on or off. Here in the list you select Windows Sandbox and click OK. Once installation is complete, Windows prompts you to restart the computer. Once installation is complete, you can launch Sandbox. By typing Sandbox, you click on Windows Sandbox to launch the application. You confirm and click Yes, and it spins off the new instance of Microsoft Windows. You can use Sandbox just as a regular version of Windows to test some uh, suspicious software or maybe check your emails. Once you're done using this, you can just click the X and that closes the Sandbox and Windows Sandbox cleans up after itself. All the data from the Sandbox will be permanently lost. If this video was helpful, make sure to click the like button in your browser. Also, please help your friends to learn this topic faster by sharing this video with them. And if you would like to be the first one to know about new videos to help you reach your goals faster, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Make sure to check out my other relevant videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have a lot of great stuff planned in the pipeline and I don't want you to miss any of it. And if you'd like to get notified about all the new stuff that are coming out, make sure to subscribe to my email list as well. All links are here on the screen. Make sure to click to stay in touch. Thanks again for watching.